very profitable. I am Nelson Boatin, the founder and CEO of Nelplast Eco Ghana Limited, where we see plastics to be a valuable resource and not a threat to the environment if properly managed. The company was incorporated in 2013. So, growing from a time of difficult home, I understand what poverty is. At the age of 13, I was already working in the plastic manufacturing industry, even though it's a child labor. At 13? Yes. How come? What was the situation like? So, the situation was my I need to help my parents to take care of myself and my siblings. So I have to work at that very early age, which is child labor. So fortunately for me, I was posted to the recycling department and my first day of work was night shift. So uh, it was because I am determined to help my parents and that was not even my first job. I was doing, I was cutting concrete blocks at the age of 13, I've, I've started doing those construction work so that I can, I can earn some money to take care of myself and my siblings and help my parents. So my first day of work, the people were surprised that went from this small boy and entering the factory to work. I explained my situation to the masters and they said, okay, fine. They will allow me to work. If Even if I want to work two hours, three or four hours, they will allow me, then pay me and I go. So they accepted me. And one fortunate thing that came from away then was they, they told me that anytime they are going to repair machine or build a new machine, I'll be carrying their tools. So through that, I got experience in building a students and other machines. They taught, you. they taught me how to build a students and machines. So that has increased my knowledge in building machines purposely for plastic recycling. Now, we have a problem of plastic waste. We have a problem of unemployment in Ghana. We have a problem of schools under trees, housing deficit, and the last of it all, Ghana is generating over 1 million tons of plastic and only 5% is recycled. That means we have a serious problem. In the, in the Western world, they have more advanced technology that can process tonnage of plastic waste within a short period of time. So I think the government needs to set in stand firm on how we will maximize the recycling of plastic waste to keep the country clean. And in 2015, June 3rd, where Ghana had this disaster coming in, where over 250 lives were lost and properties, most of the blames were attributed to the plastic waste choking the gutters. I felt very bad hearing that news that plastic was one of the major cause of the flood and loss of, of lives. So by then, I became very confused. The next day I called my managers in to discuss on a product that we can bring out, which will not uh, pollute the environment anymore, but rather save the environment. So Nelplus decided that, why don't we use the problem of plastic waste to solve the other three problems we're gonna have by building eco-friendly and affordable homes for the very low-income Ghanaian, create jobs for the youth and women, clean the environment also. So we are using one problem to solve the other three problems that we have in Ghana. That is the main reason why Nelplas was so eager to enter into this plastic bricks production to save Ghana. Our first try was to do the plastics in a metallic drum we set fire under it, then we wait for the plastic to get melted and mix with sand. Uh, we, tried the, we, we tried the solution for a couple of times, but I realized that we are still polluting the environment. And therefore, what can I do to also save the film that is coming out after the burning? So I built an extruder with three heating zones 
The reason why we are using three eating zones is Nelplast uses all kinds of plastic waste with the exception of PVC pipes. And this plastic waste has different melting points. So if you set the heaters only one eating zone, some of the plastic might not make uh, melt and mix well with the sun. So these three heating zones range from 120 degrees Celsius, we have 160, and the last is 180, sometimes we go 200, depending on the type of plastic that we are, do, we are recycling. So are the plastic waste we receive from the women, the, the, the waste pickers, from all sorts of places, the drainage, the landfill, the lorry station, the marketplace. So after we receive this plastic waste, we crush and wash them and semi-dry and then mix with sand and carbon black with some coloring to it just to give it the beauty that the customer wants. These are also these are uh, laminate from Nestle Ghana Limited. We, we, we receive them at no fee. We also use them in the production of the bricks. So this is a mixture of sand, plastics, organic pigments, and carbon black to prevent some of the plastics that degrade under the sun from the UV effect. So the mixture will then be put in the extruder. Then it goes through three heating zones to ensure that most of the plastics are well melted and mixed with the sand. We scale them to have a uniform tile size and then press them under the hydraulic press. So between 30 seconds to one minute, we should be able to bring out one break out. So the reason why I would recommend one to use the plastic bricks than the concrete one is with the plastic bricks, they don't crack. You don't need much cement in laying them. They, they, they interlock with the male and female ends that we created. And also it's crack, it's earthquake proof. They have the, they have the ability to expand and contract when there's earthquake and it's maintenance free unlike the concrete one where every year you need to chisel some part some part is cracked this will last for a lifetime and it's very people are people think uh, because it's plastics there will be heat no the blocks are designed in such a way that there is a groove in between that doesn't allow the heat from outside to enter and also maintain the, the temperature of the room so always the room doesn't feel hot as people are thinking is plastic it will be hot now in terms of burning the plastics the bricks are made up of 30 percent plastic only the rest is sand now the sun here serves as a fire retardant to the product so when you set fire to this bridge it will be very 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 slow for it to burn just like the concrete one that is how it's going to be behave so we are in this beautiful building this house 
can you tell us how you, you, you bought built this edifice? Okay, so this house that we are in was built with 13,400 kilos of plastic waste from our beaches, drainage, car parks, marketplaces, etc. We we actually did the mold seven cool times before getting it right. We never give up because uh, we, we, we knew that this could be a game changer for the whole country. Having a, a plastic house, affordable, durable, will be the way forward. Okay, so how long did it take to build this place? It took me 72 days to finish this building with, with materials on site. Okay. It took us 72 days to raise this structure with materials on site. So how, how long did it take the Because you are the Yeah. So now with the others coming in, we are giving our client between 8 to 12 months to finish the house for them. Okay, so do you do the construction yourself or they can just hire a normal mason somewhere to do the, the, the work for them? So now plus we are now setting up a new company which will manage the construction of the houses. But for now I'm training a lot of masons because there are a little changes from the plastic bricks to the concrete one. So that is what I'm doing. I'm training more masons on how to use this so that we will lessen our bedding and concentrate more on the production. How, how do you take it to the people? How do, they, how do you make them see that, oh, there's this product here, you know? Okay, so with the help of the Ministry of Environment, then Professor Frimpong Boatin was the first person to bring us out to show our product to the world that this is what Neoplast is doing. And since then, there have been numerous customers coming our way. The product itself also uh, sell. We don't do much marketing because of the quality and the affordability of the product. How were you able to come up with funding? Initial funding to start this business? Because visiting the factory, you can tell that a lot has gone into it. So, uh, fortunately for me, uh, the factory I was working with when I was young, it's a family business and they decided to sell it. But they put it across that anybody who finds a buyer will get a percentage of 5% from the total sale. God being on my side, I brought the buyer. The percentage I had, I also set up Nail Plus and I brought the people with me. So those that you see in the factory, they are my co-workers. We have 56 workers employed directly and over 300 indirect workers and 98% of them are women. They go around to do the picking of the plastic waste. When they bring it to us, we scale them and pay them according to the weight of plastics they were able to collect per day. The least person is getting around 50 Ghana cities. Some are getting as high as 1,000, 2,000 per day if they're able to collect the plastic and if we have the capacity to take them. But these women, they have the capacity of taking over 20,000 kilos of plastic waste from the environment on a daily basis. So is, how, how is government coming in to help such an initiative since you are doing so well for the environment? I think Ghana has that issue. How, how is the government helping? Okay, so with MESTI support, that's Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, they've been very, very supportive of what we are doing at Nailplast. Our first big contract, we had it from them, we were to pave the entry of the ministry to the EPA blog. That was the biggest uh, contract that we had from the Ministry of Environment. And also we had some promises from the Ministry of Work, the Minister of Work and Housing. He has also visited what the, the house that we built with plastic. And they assure us that they are, the government will be embarking on affordable housing and they will make sure that Neoplast bricks is used in building this affordable housing. Since waste is such a huge problem, assuming somebody is watching you right now, um, and they can't do 
you know, to the scale at which you are doing now. Which, which other thing can they do with the plastics to help the environment? Alternatively, the youth can also have a, a different innovation for this plastic waste challenge or problem that we have. The collection or the pelletizing is also one of the things we can do to reduce the plastic waste that we have by recycling the plastic waste into granules so that we don't import virgin materials to increase the tonnage of waste that we have. We can always recycle the plastic waste and use recyclable materials in our production. Okay, so if somebody wants to start the pelletizing, what do they need to start? So if one wants to start the pelletizing of plastic waste, all that they need is, is the extruder, the either HGP or LLDP extruder to pelletize this plastic waste, especially the pure sachet or the HDG, HDP type of plastic waste. And that can bring a very good income to them. So would, would that be able to sustain them with their families? I have been in that business before and it's very, very profitable. So, where, where do you see uh, uh, Nelplast in the near future? Nelplast, in the near future, is going to be the biggest recycling company in Africa. Looking at the tonnage of plastic waste Ghana is generating, we are working towards to increase the percentage that from 5% to about 50%, so that Ghana can also be seen as the cleanest country in the whole world. Uh, do you have any last words, something you'd like yeah. the world to know? Okay. So, we all, everybody's saying plastic is the problem, plastic is the problem. But plastic is not the problem. We humans are the problem for our improper disposal of plastic after used. The plastic that we see uh, in the landfills, on our drainage, in our drainage beaches, never fly by themselves. Then we carry them out there. If we were to put them in a proper place, we wouldn't see them around. And people always say, let's replace plastic with paper. A change of attitude is the way to go. If we change our attitude, we won't have that problem. And if you don't change the attitude and replace the plastic with paper, we are going to carry the same attitude of plastics to the paper. And with the paper, more trees are going to be cut down to produce it. And when they decompose, they also release toxic chemicals to our soil. So I believe change of attitude is the way to go and not replacing the plastic with paper. Fix yourself. Fix it. <laughs> <laughs> This will be political. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nelson. Thank you so much for having me uh, and sharing this insight with us. Oh, okay. we, are, we are very grateful. And I know a lot of people will take you from it. Uh, and we'll, we'll all make sure that we have a better environment and we have you know, affordable buildings and housing for our people. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you too. God bless you.